Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to go through the if function in Microsoft Excel. Like a jump shot in basketball, the if function is one of those basic fundamental tools in every Excel user's toolbox that is useful in many situations that you'll come across. Throughout this video, we're going to go through some scenarios that beginner, intermediate, and advanced users would experience when using the if function. So you'll want to watch through this entire video and don't forget to hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm at no cost whatsoever. And with all that said, let's head on into the video. The if function's sole purpose is to compare two values using a logical test. And if the result of the logical test is true, the if function will return a value. And if not, the if function will return another value. In other words, if something is true, then do something or else do something else. Before we dive into the example, did you know that there is a simplified version of the if function? Let's have a look. Let's say that we're a sales manager and we want to determine whether a salesperson gets a bonus or not. To determine if the salesperson gets a bonus or not, we need to perform a logical test which we can do by using these comparison operators. So let's go ahead and do our logical test in this cell here by pressing the equal sign and I'm going to check to see if the value in this cell here is greater than or equal to 10,000. Now we can see that we're not using the if function at all, but when I press the enter key, we get something returned to us, which is the word true. And then copying this formula down for the rest of the salespeople, we can also see that we get falses to appear as well. So even though we're not explicitly using the if function, we kind of are still using it because we get something returned to us, whether it be the word true or the word false. Now, if we want the cells to say something other than true or false, like let's say bonus or no bonus, then we'll need to use the if function for real. So here I'm going to enter in the if function. And because we already did the logical test, I'm just going to reference it like this. And then the value that I want to return if it's true is the word bonus. And then the value if it's false is going to be no bonus. Then I'll complete the function like this then press the enter key. And we can see the result of bonus return for Alice because she reached the threshold. And then so copying this function down for the rest of the salespeople, we can see some of them did not get a bonus as well. Now in normal use, you wouldn't split up the logical test and the function like this in two separate columns. You would combine it into a single one. So instead of referencing cell C4, I'm just going to copy the contents in that cell and I'm going to use it in the if function for real. Then I should get the same results. And I do. And with that, I'm able to delete this column because we don't need it anymore. And now we've just completed our first if function. Now that we know which salespeople got bonuses or not, we can move on to using the if function to group data into categories. So over here, I have categories for high, medium, and low sales with their corresponding thresholds. So in this cell here, I'm going to type in the if function. And the logical test is going to be if the value in this cell here is greater than or equal to this value up here, 15,000. And I'm going to turn it into an absolute cell reference by pressing F4. And the value that I want to return if it's true is the word high. Now in the value of false argument, I'm actually going to start another if function. And this logical test is to check if this value is greater than or equal to this value up here of 10,000. And I'll just make sure to lock that into place as well. And what I want to return if that logical test is true is the word medium. Now, if that does not return true, I'm going to return the value low. Then I'll press the enter key. And now we got our first grouping of medium. So copying that formula down for the rest of the salespeople, we can see that there are different groupings for different salespeople. And because we use cell references to determine our thresholds, if I was to change this value from 15,000 to, let's say, 12,000, we can see our results change automatically. In this next example, let's say that we have a company promotion where we want to offer a 20% discount to our VIP members. So in our cell here, I'm going to type in our if function, and my logical test is going to be if the value in the cell here is equal to the word VIP, I want to return the standard price, which is located up here. Then I'll make that an absolute cell reference 
and apply our discount by multiplying by 1 minus 20%. And if that logical test returns false, I want it to just show the standard price. So I'll lock that into place as well. And let's press the Enter key. And we can see that Grace, because she's not a VIP member, gets the standard price. But if I copy this function down for the rest of the members, we can see that the VIP members got the discount. Something that I want to introduce here is the Evaluate Formula feature. And it's something that I use to help me step through and know exactly what a function is doing. And it's located up here in the Formulas tab, and it's just right here. So if I wanted to evaluate, let's say, this first formula, I can click the Evaluate Formula like this, and we get a pop-up that looks like this, and it's essentially going through step-by-step step what the function is doing. So we can see here that it's checking if B3 currently says starter is equal to the word VIP. So when I click evaluate again, it returns the value false. And then because the logical test returns false, we just get the value in cell D1, which is 100. Now that was a relatively easy example because we only had one criteria to worry about. Now what if we had more like we have shown here? So the first one being if the member has a VIP membership type, so that remains unchanged. But we also want to apply the discount if a member has a starter membership type and has been a member for seven or more years, or if the member has a pro membership type and has been a member for four or more years. So now we have three different criteria that will result in a discount. So to be able to implement this, we're going to introduce the OR or AND function. The way that the OR function works is that if any of the logical tests within it return the value true, then the OR function itself will result in the value true. And the way that the AND function works is that all logical tests within it need to return the value true for the AND function to return the value true. So let's go ahead and implement our new criteria. So in this cell here, I'm going to type in the IF function, and I'm going to start it off with the OR function. And in this OR function, we have three criteria. So the first logical test within our OR function it's going to be the same as what we had before, where we're checking to see if the member is a VIP member. So if the value in this cell is equal to VIP. Now for the next logical test, I'm going to use the AND function. And here, we're going to check to see if the value in this cell is equal to the word starter. And we're also going to check to see if the member has been a member for longer than seven years. Now for our third logical test, we're going to use the AND function again, where we're going to check to see if the member is has a pro membership and has been a member for more four or more years. So now if any of those logical tests within the OR function return true, we're going to apply our discount. So we're going to take this value and multiply it by our discount. Like this and then if the or function returns false then we're just going to show the standard price so now we'll press the enter key and then copy the formula down and now we can see the discount applied where they weren't before let's evaluate the formula in this cell here so i'll just click this so as i'm clicking the evaluate button we can see what the function is doing so we can see that it's checking to see if they're a VIP member, which is going to return false. So here we can see that this person is a starter member, but they've only been a member for four years. So that test returns false. And because AND requires all the tests to be true, the AND function will return false. And then our third argument in the OR function is checking to see if they're a pro member, which they're not. So this whole thing's going to return false. And because everything in this OR function is false, the OR function returns false, and now we just show the standard price. So let's go ahead and look at someone else. So let's look at Jack here, and let's evaluate this formula. So for Jack, because they're a VIP, that's going to return true. And then we can skip through here, because these ones are all going to return false. And in this case, because one of the tests returned true, the OR function is going to return true. And here, 
we're going to apply our discount. So there's our discount, and if it's true, then we return the number 80, which it does. Now in this example, let's say that we're a project manager and we want to determine the status of our tasks based on the plan and our actual and forecast finish dates. We have our criteria listed down here for statuses like on track, completed, completed late, and forecasted to miss. Now we could use nested if functions like we did in our company sales example, but that would result in a lot of nested if functions, which would add more complexity and make it harder for others to understand. So to avoid using nested if functions, we're gonna use the ifs function. So let's go ahead and use the ifs function. So in this cell here, I'm gonna type in IFS and then tab into this function. So here I'm gonna type in our first logical test where I'm checking to see if the date that's in this cell here is less than or equal to the planned finish date. And I'm also gonna to check to see if the date in here is greater than today's date. So to get today's date, I'm just gonna use the today function. And if that test results in true, I wanna return the words on track. Now for our next logical test, I'm gonna to check to see if the value in this cell here is less than or equal to the date in this cell. And if that's true, I'm gonna return the word completed. And now for a third logical test, I'm gonna use the and function again. And here I'm gonna to check to see if the value in this cell is greater than the value in this cell. And then also check to see if the value or date in this cell is less than or equal to today's date. So use the today function again. And if that's true, I want to return the words completed late. And now for our last logical test, I'm gonna use the and function again. And here I'm gonna to check to see if the date is greater than the planned finish date. and if this date is greater than today's date. And if this is true, I want to return the words forecasted to miss. So I'll close that off and let's press the enter key and then copy this formula down. And let's evaluate some of the formulas here to see exactly what our function is doing. So for example, Let's look at roof installation here that currently says completed late. And let's see how we got to that conclusion. So stepping through here, I'm just gonna step through until we get to the completed late section. So we can see here that it's checking if the date is greater than our plan finish date. So this is true. And we also wanna see if the date that's in C5 is less than today's date, which is true. So this whole thing returns true and we get the words completed late. Let's take a look at one more. So here we're forecasted to miss because the date here is November 18th and the plan is November 15th and both of them occur in the future. So let's go ahead and see if that's the case in our evaluate formula feature here. So here we can see it's checking if the date is greater than the plan finish which is true. And we're checking to see if that date, the forecast date is greater than today's date, which is also true. So if both are true, the AND function returns true and we get the result of forecasted to miss. And that's how you use the if and ifs function in Microsoft Excel. Just remember that no matter how complex an if function looks, all it boils down to is if something is true, then do something or else do something else. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to see more content like this in the future. I'll see you all in the next video.